Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today with BMW M at the Saxon Ring in Germany for a first drive in the new M2 CS. Now the CS is the limited production hardcore model of the M2. I've driven the M2, I've driven the M2 competition, now it's time to experience the CS. So let's go for a walk around to take in all of the changes that they've made, the new carbon fibre pieces to save some weight, the upgrades to the engine, to the braking and to various other aspects and then we'll be taking it out on track here at the Saxon Ring to experience exactly what it's all about. So let's take a first proper look and drive at the new BMW M2 CS. Here in the pit lane, let's start with a walk around to go through all of the details of this car, the things that BMW M have changed when creating the M2 CS. In a second, we'll also check out the interior, get it started up, hear how it sounds, and of course, take it for a first drive here at the Saxon Ring. Now, the car that I'm taking a look at right now is very much in the launch specification. The body color is Misano Blue, which is one of only four choices that you can have for the M2 CS. It's then finished with the matte gold wheels. These are the optional upgrade wheels the 19 inch wheels forged Y spoke as you can see lightweight and also wearing sport cup two tires there are two choices of tires you can also have these wheels in jet black should you prefer as well now the car has a very high specification as standard there have been a lot of things worked and changed for example the engine makes 40 horsepower more than the m2 competition now up to 450 they've added the m adaptive suspension setup we can talk more about that but broadening its breadth of ability from comfort through to being even more dynamic it has the standard M Sport brakes, although this car is fitted with the optional M Carbon Ceramics. And they've also taken out quite a bit of weight. Some of that comes through the use of carbon fibre on the exterior. For example, this is all standard equipment. The carbon diffuser, the carbon gurney flap on the boot lid. There's a sandwich construction for the roof. I'm going to show how that is created as well, the full carbon roof. We've got carbon mirror caps. The full bonnet is carbon, saving quite a substantial amount as well. And also the carbon splitter to balance the downforce with the gurney at the back. So talking engine. And I think we should come around actually get this opened up so we can take a proper look at both that bonnet and also talk about the engine itself inside here just a double pull of the lever to come and open this up you'll notice it has this this is actually for air to come in and you can see the carbon on the underside to prevent anything that might fall into the engine bay that's all obstructed and closed but full carbon bonnet saving uh, about i think seven and a half kilos 50 percent down from standard to seven and a half on this the engine is the three litre twin power turbo inline six, in this case making 450 horsepower, 550 newton meters, so 40 horsepower up from the M2 competition, but the same amounts of torque. Now that is mated to your choice of either the manual gearbox or the DCT, the dual clutch. This car has the six speed manual with a clutch pedal. I'm not sure which I'm going to be driving on track in a moment, but around the front, the carbon support is as seen before. The engine, obviously quite a small lightweight unit, but taking away some of this weight over the front axle significant help to the overall weight balance of the car down at the bottom front openings as we've seen on the competition of course lots of areas for cooling and that distinct triple section that you have down at the very bottom now finished with this lower uh, lower lip splitter as well so let's close this back down that is really light by the way just as i close that pop it down into place so the M Adaptive Suspension, the car previously didn't have adjustable suspension. It now has the damper setup that came from the M3 and M4, which means that when you pop it into comfort mode, and you've got the button just here to do so, that was previously a blanking plate. When you pop it into comfort mode, it's even more comfortable than the M2 competition. When you pop it into sportier settings, it's even more focused, even more dynamic. So you can see the obvious benefits of doing that. The inside has been changed a little bit as well. You've now got the competition M competition seats that have these cutouts like in the M3 and M4 CS, finished with the fire red stitching and the M stripes up there towards the headrest, the M2 illumination, but a few other significant things have changed. The central tunnel is now much lighter, made from carbon fiber, no armrests, so done away with some storage, but in favor of saving weight there in the center of the car. You've got the Alcantara M Sport steering wheel, some carbon fiber trim around the exterior. So upgrades that are all, well, quite nice things to have as well, along with all of this. So weight is taken out, power is raised, it's made even more dynamic. Sounds like a pretty winning combination, but let's take a step inside just to get this started up for a moment so you can see what it sounds like there we go we are up and running with the inline six obviously the new controls when you press them it gives you your different modes comfort sport and sport plus as you get up on the dashboard 
and you've got the information through the tile system up here on the iDrive as seen before. So we will take this on out then, or maybe another one we'll see in just a moment, and go and experience what the new M2CS is like to drive. The previous stints with the M2CS are out on track at the moment, so we're going to see them coming around the last corner here at the Saxon Ring and hear them flying on by. One with the gold wheels, one with the black wheels. And one other flying by there. So when they come back in, it will be time for me to jump back on board the car to go out for a drive on the track in the new M2CS. Here we go then, on board the M2 CS. So we've got M1 and M2 to go through. M1 currently has powertrain in sport, suspension in sport, steering in sport. M2, which we will use later on, puts it in M dynamic mode. We have Sport Plus for the powertrain, the others still in sport. We will start in M1. We've got the seven speed DCT, the seven speed dual clutch transmission. Give my thumbs up, handbrake off. We will go to the right into drive. There we go, into automatic drive at the moment. We've got the drive logic, so we can put that up through mode two, make it more aggressive depending how we want it to feel. At the moment, just automatic. If you go one more to the right, that's then into manual. So I will have this drive to get started, get comfortable, following a pace car and another driver. It's nippy, so I'm expecting it to feel a little bit more light-footed, a little bit more fluid, but also, more in tune with the track. The M2 competition I drove at Ascari back at the launch. It was a manual car that I drove. Oh yes, this is what you like. Small and nimble, short wheelbase, lots of power. It's instantly a lot of fun. Double apex on this corner. Play on tight, kick down. Obviously, like I said, auto on the gearbox for the time being. smile instantly. This is already great. 450 horsepower, plenty quick enough. Firm brakes, carbon ceramics helping a lot there as well. Overbroke, we've got a feel for what the braking power is all about in this car. We've come up the hill, lots of undulations on this circuit. Have a brake into here. So we go down towards the main back straight. Traction light is coming on a lot at the moment, like that. So I need to watch out when we go into end dynamic mode because this is going to be a snappy little thing. Heavy on the brakes, down towards the last little section of the track. shifters on the back of the wheel to come out of the last corner onto the start straight build up the revs up to about 7,000 rpm picking up decent speed we're over 200 kilometers an hour there down the straight as we come back around onto the start straight this is going to be the opportunity to put the car into m2 mode is where I need to be a lot more careful and not play to, play, try too much to play catch up with the cars in front who are noticeably quicker than I am at the moment. Right, drop down the gears, keep it in third, just while I get a little feel. Obviously traction not fully off and dynamic mode just gives it a little bit more play like that. I can feel it instantly. We need to swap around, swap drivers. I'm going to overtake the other car. Up behind the pace car with its gold wheels. <laughs> you can already tell that this is just allowing a little bit more rear end slide. <laughs> Almost a little bit of slide between the corners there. Okay, lean on that front left, in tight. Short shift it for some balance. Running the curves. Make a V, double apex, oh my gosh. You can just feel the agility of the thing. It's taking me a little getting used to. I need to get a bit more comfortable before I can go full throttle with it. end to get a feel for what this can offer us. You can hold so much speed. With a little M car, that's what you've got to remember, 
it's become a proper veritable weapon in this environment. We've got a tightening radius last corner, penultimate corner here, which is definitely throwing me off a little. on this a little bit more let's go back into drive in fact let's go back into m1 here i'm going to take it easy just think for a moment so we've got sport sport and sport so you can actually soften it up even more you can of course press the buttons that you now have for the adaptive suspension here in the center and you can put that into three different settings into comfort and this is where the ride is even more comfortable than the m2 competition offered just by having adaptive suspension the damper setup i think that came from the m3 m4 means that obviously you've got this variable ability it's not just one ride solid feel all the time it has the option to, to tighten up when you're out on track which is always a wonderful thing and i love configuring and being able to change settings in cars and set them up dynamically for wherever you're driving with the steering let's go full soft oh i felt that massively the steering feel change is huge from comfort through sport mid corner into sport plus how much heavier it gets hard to show that but a really, really massive, massive difference. In comfort, it's very soft. There's a bit more kind of fluidity without anything really happening in the center, which obviously is for comfortable motorway driving, for long distance cruising. Um, I did put it back into manual by mistake. And then obviously with the gearbox doing its thing, you can put drive logic into the lower settings. You can put it into efficient mode. So I've kind of kicked down, but everything gets just a, a touch softer and a touch more, um, you know, smoother, gentle characteristics. Wow, that was, that was quite a lot to take in very quickly, I'm not gonna lie. Out on a, a fairly unfamiliar circuit and try and learn exactly what this car is all about. And obviously I've got the, the performance charts up on the screen, which are kind of cool. You can see when I put my foot down on the throttle. And then obviously if we go back to M2 just for a second, we're in manual, fourth gear, you get a little bit more sound out of the car. And obviously if you turn traction fully off, you know that if you do that kind of thing, give it a little stab in a corner it's going to kick the back out and um, misbehave a touch but as it is that's a lot of fun second gear <laughs> oh cheeky misbehavior okay m1 back into drive auto as we come back in and we've got the m4 gt4 and m2 cs racing cars as well sitting in the uh, in the paddock but I guess they'll come and do the uh, do the tire checks but yeah all well all fantastic neutral I guess we would have stop start but we've got a warm engine at the moment Alcantara steering wheel is really cool especially with the M stitching that you have inside I love carbon inside I love the CS Alcantara dashboard the seats are really good as you'd expect and overall yeah can't really uh, can't really fault it exactly what I think this car needed to be on top of the competition it does bump up the price but it's for doing this and it's very welcoming you can drive it very quickly at decent speed so yeah that was pretty fab let's have a bit of a sound check then with these new exhaust tips the M engraved exhaust tips to hear what the CS sounds like the burbles that we're used to from that six-cylinder inline engine of the BMW's Sano Blue now with some sun out on it as well out on the track tell you what though I do actually really like the gold wheels really really do I'm not the biggest black wheel fan the jet black that you have with this although the gold calipers do stand out nicely the satin gold um, that you have for those and obviously we've got all the carbon but this roof this roof I need to tell you more about this they've actually got a demo inside that we can go and check out and talk a little bit more about it but as a first drive it's definitely the nimble exciting fun car and it is very fun it's playful it's got character that's what we want out of this kind of thing right that's what this car is for it's a car to use for lots of different purposes just as we have been obviously now the fans events running on overdrive to keep it cool 
critical in such environments. There are two things to show you here then. One is an example of the roof and the other is the central tunnel. So you can see the new CS central console versus the predecessor, the competition style, which has the armrest and storage. The new one doesn't have that in favor of saving weight and being made from carbon fiber. And I can tell you the weight difference, this is quite heavy, is very substantial. That is significantly lighter. The other thing to discuss is this, the sandwich construction carbon fiber roof. Now you can see here how it has the carbon layer on this side and also it's carbon on the outside as we've seen, but it's got this different construction which helps basically keep weight down, keep rigidity up. It's now a structural part. It wasn't a structural part before on the M2 and the M2 competition. And also I'm led to believe that when it's raining, it's also quite quiet inside. You don't hear the pitter patter. <laughs> we did hear the M4 GTS though, just go past down the straight. But yes, these are some examples of some of the components that have been used to save some weight. With the cars here, I'd like to talk about one thing I do like about the specification of them and one thing not so much. Now, if we come through to the interior of this car, the materials used, and in particular the leather, is merino that you normally find. Merino leather that you normally find in the more upper end BMW models, which works really well, especially supported by the Alcantara. And there you can see even the Alcantara insert with the CS logo over on the passenger side of the dashboard. The thing I am slightly less of a fan of is the choice of color. Now the original M2 launched with Long Beach Blue, a color we also saw on the X6M. The M2 competition model launched in Hockenheim Silver, both kind of exclusive colors, but this is Misano Blue, a color available on the 1 Series, the X1, the X2, the 2 Series Active Tourer. It's not an exclusive to this. And if you don't want Misano Blue, I think you kind of have white, black, or Hockenheim Silver, or this. Those are your limitations. You can't do a custom bespoke color. You choose just between those. So I'd have liked a new exclusive color option. I'd have liked more variety or choices on that front. Not that I don't think this looks good. It's purely the fact that if you park it in a car park, it will be sitting alongside a lot of other less, less special models than something like the M2 CS. I would be ordering those gold wheels. I like those. I think they suit it very, very well. And I think, given it's a fairly limited production model, you know, in total, there will be maybe 2,200, 2,300, something like that. It's limited by production, especially due to homologation with the engine, which has to mean that the European models are all going to be built very thick and fast coming out over the next couple of months. I think they will have to be delivered before uh, a later date in this year, but no doubt the customers of these cars are going to enjoy them an awful lot. I certainly enjoyed today, that is for sure. Driving this and getting that experience, feeling the more nimbleness of it, but also the dynamic ability that the car has. And I think it looks really cool. There's no question about it. You know, it's a small BMW and actually way back, if I wind back the clock, I used to have myself a BMW 1 Series, actually when it first, or when the 1 Series Coupe first came out. So we're talking 2008, I think it was, the very first kind of period of those cars. I always liked that small BMW model. Yes, mine was a diesel. It wasn't like an M135i at the time or an M2 CS now, but it's a great like, winning formula, really short wheelbase. In this case, 450 horsepower, all to the back wheels with a manual or with a DCT, depending which way around you'd like it. So. That's been it then, my first drive experience in BMW's new M2 CS. Hearing what it sounds like, getting a feel for what it's like behind the wheel and telling you through, talking you through some of the changes and things that they've done to save some weight, taking out uh, some of the different components. You know, the carbon roof, I don't think I actually said. Standard roof, 14 kilos, this roof, four kilos. That's a lot of weight saving, 10 kilos out of the very top of the car. Bonnet, again, shaved about 50% of the weight of the original bonnet. So big, big deals, big weight savings. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. First full look at the M2 CS out on the road or rather out on the racetrack. And thank you very much as always for watching guys. I appreciate your support and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.